Hello aspirants, welcome to the daily editorial analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy. Today, 18th September, these are the editorials that we are going to discuss. The first editorial, Reaping the Silver Dividend. This editorial is taken from the newspaper Indian Express. The second editorial, Demographic Advantage, Indian Economy's Sweet Spot. This article is taken from the newspaper The Hindu. So, without much delay, let us begin with our first editorial. Look at this newspaper article, Demographic Advantage, Indian Economy's Sweet Spot. This newspaper article is talking about jobless growth. What is jobless growth? Jobless growth is a condition where the nation will record economic growth, but the unemployment rate will be high. India, despite being the fifth largest economy, despite having 63%, despite having 63 percentage of working age population, India is facing this problem. According to this article, the biggest reason behind this is the sudden shift from agriculture to tertiary sector, leaving the labor intensive manufacturing sector underdeveloped. So, let us discuss more about the labor market, issues faced in the labor market and how to utilize the present dem demographic dividend efficiently and what are the key government initiatives and challenges. Without much delay, let us begin this discussion. First, we are going to see the problems in the labor and employment. The biggest confusion is related to labor intensive growth and capital intensive growth. India has a 63 percentage of working age population just now we discussed. Despite having this, the recent development is based on capital intensive and if you look the economist Arvind Panagaria pointed out that this is not idle. Therefore, we need a more balanced approach. The second problem is outlet. The second problem is outdated labor laws or courts. The outdated labor laws is will hinder the ambience for business growth and the delay in the implementation of the new labor code passed by the parliament will create uncertainty among the investors. So, these are the major problems faced in the labor and employment in the context of India's economic growth. Coming to the manufacturing sector, we already discussed the reason behind this jobless growth is sudden shift from agriculture to tertiary. But still, 45 percentage of work workforce is employed in agriculture. But the contribution of this agriculture to the GDP is just 18 percentage. So, here we can see the output is not proportional to the employed workforce. It may lead to a condition like disguised unemployment that is employing more people in one sector than needed. Therefore, we need to focus more on manufacturing sector. And the other problem, other problem faced in manufacturing sector is unorganized sector. And recently, the government has brought many schemes to develop the manufacturing sector. We will discuss that. Coming to the unorganized sector, 19 percentage of the workforce in the unorganized sector is suffering from low productivity. And therefore, therefore, this shows importance on focusing on no non-agricultural and unorganized sectors development. And the next is labor intensive industries. So, we have to promote the labor intensive industries like through, pri through prioritizing sectors like toys, apparel, tourism and logistics. And the addition to this, we have to focus on the skill development of the workers for their upward movement and this will ensure a better life standard for them. So, now we are going to see the importance of skilling. So, what is the importance of skill? We know that now the present at present the development is more market oriented and the market demands a particular skill at a particular point of time. Therefore, skilling the people and continuous skilling of the people is very important to ensure growth, employment and better life standard. But the biggest problem in India skilling is skill gap. That is only 4.4 percentage of young workforce is formally skilled. Therefore, it will reduce opportunity for the, for the remaining population. And the next challenge in skilling is continuous skilling. That is providing continuous skilling is another challenge. So, therefore, to provide continuous skill programs to the workers, we need to improve better public-private partnership. And this public-private partnership is very important to develop industry-relevant training. And coming to the artificial intelligence opportunities, the global AI market is expected to grow nine times by 2030. And India is the second largest talent pool because we have a very strong service sector and a huge youth population. But there is a 51 percentage demand supply gap. But if we can address this issue, then definitely it is a great opportunity for the nation. Now we are going to see some of the government initiatives to utilize the demographic dividend effectively. The first major scheme was Skill India Mission. It was launched in the year 2015 with an aim to train over 40 crore people by 2022. One of such example is Pradhan Mandri Kaushal Vikas Yojana. This scheme is focusing on providing industry relevant skill to the people, especially youth. Next mission is National Apprenticeship Promotion Scheme. This scheme encourages on the job training and it is an opportunity for the students and students and researchers to put their theoretical knowledge into practice. Under this scheme, financial incentivizers will be provided to the employers for encouraging apprentices. The third such program was Startup India Initiative. It was launched in the year 2016. It promotes entrepreneurship and innovation among the youth population and it will also develop business ambience 
through providing tax benefits and through providing easy access to fund for startups. The next scheme is Adal Innovation Mission. The aim of this mission is to promote a culture of innovation among students. And the program includes, and this mission includes programs like other Adal Tinkering Labs where the students can put their innovations into practices. And the fifth scheme is Pradhan Mandri Mudra Yojana. The scheme provides credit facility to the small and micro enterprises. And under the scheme, the enterprises can receive credit facility up to 10 lakh under three categories. They are Shishu, Tarun and Kishore. Now we are going to see the challenges faced by the nation in utilizing the workforce. The first major challenge is skill gap. We already said that only 4.4 percentage of the youth population has received former skilling. Therefore, it will create a mismatch between the industrial requirement and a skill a person has. It will lead to unemployment. And the next major challenge is low labor force participation. Coming to the female labor force participation, it is just 35.6 percentage against the 81.8 percentage of male participation. And the overall labor force participation is just 58.9 percentage. And the third major challenge is jobless growth. The sudden shift from agriculture to service sector resulted into a service-led growth and that created only few job opportunities and resulted into underdevelopment of manufacturing and agriculture sector. And the next challenge is underemployment in agriculture sector. So in the beginning, we said that nearly 45 percentage of the workforce are employed in agriculture, while the contribution of the agriculture to the GDP is just 18 percentage. Therefore, it shows a low productivity in the agriculture sector and this condition will lead to disguised unemployment and this condition will lead to disguised unemployment and the next major challenge is informal sector dominance nearly 80 percentage of the workforce are currently employed in informal sector they are they are lacking job security and social benefits they are suffering from low productivity and low wage so in this topic we discuss what are the problems in the labor market what are the key initiatives taken by the government of india to overcome this issue and what are the challenges in utilizing the workforce so based on that we have to give a way forward so what are the things can be done the first major step will be focusing on skill development that is through enhancing skill through government programs the example is like we said the pradhan mandri kaushal vikas yojana and the skill development can be also achieved through vocational training provided through public private partnership it will be very useful in providing industrial relevant skilling and the next step can be labor reforms that is implementing new labor codes and promoting job creation in labor intensive sectors and the next step can be boosting manufacturing sector that includes encouraging government programs like making in programs like make in india and also production linked incentive schemes this will be very useful in for in shifting our focus from service to manufacturing sector and the next step can be promoting msmes it will create more job opportunity as well as it will increase productivity and the next step can be increasing women's workforce participation that can be done through introducing flexible working hours and also through providing child care support so in this topic we discussed the problems in the labor force market challenges and key initiatives of the government and a way forward based on this understanding try to answer this main question. The question is, India's demographic dividend presents both opportunities and challenges for the nation's economic growth. Discuss the various initiatives taken by the government to, to utilize this potential. So, the entire question can be divided into two parts. In the first part, we have to address the opportunities and challenges in demographic dividend. For example, currently we have a huge youth population. Therefore, it is the best time to increase our productivity and achieve economic growth. This is an opportunity. But at the same time, if you are lacking skill as well as education and technology, then definitely it will be a junk population. Therefore, it will burden. Therefore, it will increase burden on government schemes. So, this is the, these are the challenges. Discuss the various initiatives taken by the government of India to utilize this potential. So, in this area, we can address government schemes like Pradhan Mandri Kaushal Vikas Yojana, importance of public-private partnership. So, based on this idea, I'll try to answer this main question and put it in the comment section. We will review and reply for your answer. So, let us move to the next article. Look at this newspaper article, Reaping the Silver Dividend. This newspaper article is talking about the expansion of Pradhan Mandri Jan Arogi Yojana. It's an insurance scheme. It now provides coverage to elderly population above the age of 70. So, it is a milestone step in ensuring the welfare of elderly population in India. So, let us discuss more about Pradhan Mandri Jan Arogi Yojana in this context. What is Pradhan Mandri Jan Arogi Yojana or Aishman Bharat Pradhan Mandri Jan Arogi Yojana? Aishman Bharat Pradhan Mandri Jan Arogi Yojana is, is a flagship scheme of government of India under Aishman Bharat. It is launched under the recommendation of National Health Policy 2017. The objective of this scheme is to achieve universal health coverage through 
through holistic intervention in primary tertiary, in primary secondary and tertiary health system. National Health Authority is the apex body responsible for implementation of Pradhan Mandri Jan Aroge Yojana. Now we are going to see the benefits of the scheme. The first major benefit is financial protection. Yes, it is an insurance scheme. Therefore, through providing a financial insurance of 5 lakh, it prevents impoverishment due to catastrophic health expenditure. It will reduce the health expenditure and it, it will be very useful for the dependent population. The second major benefit is inclusivity. Through expanding the insurance to the age above 70, it covers vulnerable population who are typically excluded by the private insurance companies. So, after a particular age, the private insurance company may not provide insurance. Therefore, through expanding the policy, now the population above the age of 70 is also covered. Therefore, it will ensure their welfare and they are, who are typically excluded by the private insurance companies. And the third major benefit is relief to vulnerables. The Pradhan Mandri Jan Aroge Yojana addresses concerns related to non-communicable diseases at present, disabilities and also rising number of bedridden elderly population. Now we are going to see the limitations of the scheme. The first major limitation is budgetary shortfall. Even though it provides insurance, even though it provides an insurance coverage of 5 lakh rupees, it may not be sufficient in certain cases due to the increasing healthcare cost. And the second major limitation is focus on curative care, that is neglecting the preventive and outpatient care, which are very essential for healthy aging. And the third major limitation is infrastructure gap that includes lack of adequate hospitals and geriatric professionals or trained geriatric professionals to treat the elder population and the next major limitation is neglect of primary health care a public health insurance policy cannot be successful without giving adequate attention to the primary health care and it is very essential for addressing chronic diseases and conditions now we are going to see the challenges faced by the Pradhan Mandri Jan Aroge Yojana. The first major challenge is healthy aging. That is ensuring healthy aging is, is a challenge and that needs a shift from the approach of curative to preventive care. And it is very essential to address issues like increasing rate of non-communicable diseases and other old age conditions. And without this, the hospitalization and advanced care will be strained. And the second major challenge is human resource deficit. The nation faces a shortage of trained healthcare professionals particularly geriatricians who are expert in treating old age population and also other healthcare professionals like nurse. The major reason behind this is the increasing rate of migration to other nations. That is the people who are graduating in professional degrees are migrating to other parts of the world for better opportunities and this healthcare professionals are one of the major. The third one is regional disparity. Due to the current rural urban divide, there will be an unequal access to healthcare in urban and rural areas and this will neglect or this will prevent the age-old population in remote areas and backward areas. And the next challenge is related to sustainability. Due to the increasing healthcare cost and due to the increasing aging population, the sustainability or the long-term sustainability of Pradhan Mandri Jan Arogi Yojana is still a question. Coming to the way forward, what are the steps can be taken to make this program effective? First one is strengthening preventive health care. That is through emphasizing more on primary and preventive care, we can reduce the incidence of non-communicable disease and hospitalization. This will be very useful for the elderly population from going into a critical condition. And the next step will be investing in geriatric infrastructure. Geriatric professionals are trained professionals for treating elderly population. Therefore, investment in geriatric infrastructure is very important. That includes building specialized facilities for old age population, training geriatric professionals and also taking steps to ensure the unique needs of aging population. And the next step can be public awareness and outreach. This will be very useful in increasing awareness about the scheme in, ru in rural and remote areas. And therefore, it will provide better accessibility to the service under the Pradhan Mandri Jan Aroge Yojana. And the next step can be collaborative approach. The government can collaborate with the private for holistic health care including palliative care. Therefore, it will reduce the burden as well as it will improve the quality of service. And the next step can be innovative financing model. It will ensure the sustainability of Pradhan Mandri Jan Aroge Yojana or schemes like that. It includes encouraging public-private partnership or providing additional tax incentives for healthcare. So, these are the steps can be taken under innovative financing model. So, in this topic, we discussed Pradhan Mandri Jan Aroge Yojana, the pros and cons of Pradhan Mandri Jan Aroge Yojana, challenges faced by the scheme and also way forward. Based on this understanding, try to answer this main question. So, the main question is, India having an older population is as equal as the youth population in terms of healthcare. 
comment on this in the light of Pradhan Mandri Jan Aroge Yojana scheme to address the issues related to target population. For answer writing, we can divide the entire question into two parts. The first part is asking about the healthcare need of older population as well as youth population. So, we can approach like the older population is already suffering from non-communicable diseases and other health conditions. So, therefore, we need to focus both preventive as well as curative measures. But in the case of youth population, they will be relatively healthy. Therefore, we need to focus more on preventive measures to protect them from other diseases. In the second part, comment on this in the light of Pradhan Mandri Jan Arogya Yojana scheme to address the issues related to target population. So, how far the Pradhan Mandri Jan Arogya Yojana is successful in addressing the issues faced by the old age population as well as other vulnerable communities and how this scheme is playing an important role in ensuring their social welfare and well-being. Try to answer this main question in this idea and post it in the comment section. We will review and reply for your answer. With this, we are coming to the end of our editorial session. If you like the video, hit the like button, give your feedbacks as comment and share this content with your friends to make the competition more healthy. Before leaving this channel, don't forget to subscribe and also hit the bell icon to receive the on-time update. Thank you. Have a nice day.